Well, good evening. It's Sunday night. We're having a Sunday night church. This is Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church and the Daytona Rescue Mission, one and the same thing. Uh, we're having church here. I wish you were here. Folks don't go to church on Sunday night anymore, sad to say. We do over here. Some of us do. A lot of us don't. But uh, Hebrews, James, Hebrews chapter 3. We had a great service this morning. I could, I wanted to send it to some of my preacher friends and some other people. And uh, the, uh, and there's people coming up on here too, watching, face, hi Facebook, good to see you here. Um, I had to just tell my worker Brad here, I said, you got to show me how to, I, I wanted to send our morning message out on, uh, Daniel chapter 12 on, on soul winning. And uh, and I want to send out from this morning, too, for you that know about Facebook, if you didn't see it, a Sunday school lesson from um, Proverbs chapter 5 I thought was very important. I want to send that out. I can't figure out how to open up Facebook and find out what I said this morning. <laughs> Brad's going to help me. But anyway, here we are. Hebrews 3. It's a reading, New Testament reading for today. Read your Bible through in a year. This is a chart. I print them 5,000 at a time, 14 minutes a day, you get through the Bible in a whole year. Hebrews 3, New Testament reading for today. Wherefore, holy brethren, holy brethren, that means saved folks, partakers of the heavenly calling, saved folks, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. That's our Savior, amen? Consider him. Consider Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that wonderful? Is it Hebrews chapter 3? Uh, Hebrews 3. That's what I'm reading. Right. I think I'm there. You got it? I think I'm there. Does it say what I just said? I'm on verse 2. Who was faithful to him? Yeah, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful to in all his house. Moses was a faithful man. They say that he might have been the greatest leader in the Bible. He led some 3,000 people uh, out of Egypt. Moses gave him power of God and he brought the plagues down. The final plague was the death of the firstborn. Maybe I'll turn this on. I don't know if I need it or not. Maybe I do. All right, there we go. Um, Moses was faithful to his house. We'll play that song afterwards. Be found faithful. They, they played that song at Brother Hiles' funeral. Found faithful. Brother Hiles was faithful. Uh, that's all I wanted, to, I wanted to be said about Brother Varga. Brother Varga was faithful to the gospel and faithful to the teachings of the word of God. I just want to be found faithful. Moses was found faithful. Paul was found faithful. Brother Hiles was found faithful. I want to be found faithful. Moses was faithful. To all his house. That meant the folks around him. I want to be faithful to you folks in church here. I want to be faithful to you friends out there in Facebook, our family members out there watching different cities and friends and on and on. Thinking about Eugene, I, I just, my wife called me. I'm a little behind. I don't watch news that much here. I've watched some, but I'm not really updated. She called me tonight. She's not feeling well. Pray for Mrs. Vargas. She, she's a little under the weather. But she just caught it on news. She ain't really up to date. I guess it, uh, Brad said, you heard it before about them people got killed in Houston. In a church, yeah. First Baptist Church, somewhere around Austin, Texas, and 25 people were killed, mowed down by automatic weapon. How sad! Uh, I think about Eugene there in in Texas. He'd been faithful to the gospel. God bless you, Eugene's on. He's on watching tonight. God bless you, faithful Eugene there. Won't be faithful to Eugene who got saved 
he got saved one morning sitting on the front, front row down, right over here on the left, about 30 feet over from the left, front, front row. Been faithful to the Lord ever since, about eight years ago, maybe longer. Um, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Oh, someone counted more glory than Moses? I thought he was the greatest leader ever walked fit. Yeah, it probably was. But who was more worthy than Moses? In so much as he hath builded the house, hath more honor than the house. Oh, who built the house? Jesus, amen. <laughs> so Jesus is better than Moses, amen. Because Jesus is God, amen. Verse 4, for every house is builded by some man. But he that built all things is God. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. All things were made by him, and not was anything made, made, was made by Jesus. That's in John chapter 1. Amen. The beginning of it. But he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house. Moses was faithful. As a servant, you know the only thing the Bible said about Moses when he died? You know, God didn't say, the wonderful, majestic leader, Moses, greatest leader that ever lived, died. You, you know the thing said about Moses? You know the thing God said about Moses? God's servant, Moses, is dead. That's all it was said. Not that said, why the mighty man of God who miraculously parted the sea and delivered three million Jews out of the hands of the Egyptians. No. All it said, God's servant Moses is dead. And who took over? But do you remember? Joshua, who was Moses' servant. Amen? Remember Joshua? Remember the 12 spies were sent out? And they came back like a committee usually does. Voted 10 against 2 not to go forward. That's what committees do. I hate committees. Dr. Howells always used to say a committee is the unprepared doing the unnecessary. And they read the minutes and waste the hours. Give me a man of God that can lead something and go forward. Amen. <clears throat> Give me a Moses. Give me a Joshua. Give me a Hiles. Give me a man of God that can lead something. <clears throat> Committees. Unprepared. Doing the unnecessary. Read the minutes and waste the hours. They say. They say. A camel. They say a camel is a horse that was built by a Baptist committee. And it might be possible. <laughs> You'll get that a while you think about it. <laughs> Did you get it yet, Brad? You'll get it later. Get it. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Not too funny? No, it's great. I'm laughing at <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see you laughing at it. No, I know. Uh, I do get Brad laughing sometimes. And he even tells people, he says, you know, you got Pastor Varga all wrong. He he's kind of funny, actually. He can make you laugh, and I do. I get at least Brad thinks it's funny once in a while. We'd be riding in the van, picking up or something, and and and, and Vanna, uh, Brad, he got a little cold or something, allergy or something, and it's cough, and uh, he start laughing. He said, like, <coughs> he almost died. He didn't do that when I told him about the camel joke about it's a horse made by a Baptist committee. Did you get it yet, Brad? <laughs> and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after and that's what we're talking about now he was a great servant a great leader here we go look verse 6 but Christ as a son over his own house <clears throat> whose house we are I'm the house of God amen God's house, God's church, God's assembly, we that believe. Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence 
and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. I'm faithful to the end. I started out on April 4th, 1969. 48 years later and a couple months and days or whatever, I'm still faithful. I start out faithful. And I'm going to end faithful. Not that I'm faithful. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But I'm going to be steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Can you say that, dear church member here tonight in church? Can you say it out there? Those that are watching via internet. Yeah. Hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing, the hope firm unto the end. I want to be fair. They, they, they call that uh, in, in, in Baptist statements of faith. I never understood it for years. I've been Baptist since the first year I was saved. I got saved in the Methodist Church, became an independent, fundamental, Bible believing King James Baptist Christian ever since then. I'm a preacher in that faith. And uh, uh, I, I, I never did uh, understand until recent years uh, the perseverance of the saints. To be faithful to the end. I used to think, and maybe I was just ignorant or whatever, I, I, I used to think that uh, uh, the perseverance of the saints smacked of work salvation. I don't think so. I, I firmly attest now that I'm saved and I know I'm saved and I'm going to be faithful to the Lord to the end. I think a lot of people that say they're saved and they fall away and they don't, they don't live a Christian life they're they probably reprobates that were fakers and never did get they had a taste of it but they never really got it you understand what i'm saying i think true saved people are faithful to the end amen all right verse seven wherefore as the holy ghost saith today if ye will hear his voice listen up verse eight Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Let's just look back at that a little minute now. You remember, remember uh, how they escaped Egypt and the Red Sea part and went across on dry land, all the army of the Egyptians was drowned in the, in the Red Sea and he got into the wilderness and what happened? Do you remember what happened, Victor? They started grumbling and complaining, remember? Yeah. That's what happened. And they, they were complaining and and uh, oh, we want to go back to Egypt. Oh, we remember the garlic and the and, and all that stuff. And it. they didn't. Man, they had to make their own bricks. They didn't even give them straw. They had to gather just, uh, sticks and stuff to make bricks with. They weren't. Fed. They said, "We got to eat this manna." They ought to have been glad they had the manna. In fact, one time out there when they were grumbling in the wilderness, remember that uh, that they brought them quails to eat. Remember that, and. Uh, and they stuffed themselves and all that, and 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 then uh, re re remember when remember when uh, remember when God was his grumbling out in the wilderness. Remember when God brought the snakes, started biting them with snakes. Remember that. And then uh, Moses lifted up a serpent. It says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in, in in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, <clears throat> that whosoever believeth in him. And that's in John chapter three. That's quoted, <clears throat> talking about. Uh, the provocation, the temptation in, in, in the wilderness. Look at verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my, and saw my works 40 years. Did you know for 40 years in the wilderness that God provided shoes, that they didn't, their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out, and provided food for them, and they didn't get sick? It's they, wonderful. Now, some of them were nasty and wicked, and they died, and their carcasses rotted in the wilderness. They didn't even give them a decent burial, you understand. But um, they saw the works of God, but they didn't respect it. 
They didn't look to the deliverance from Egypt. They didn't thank God for the manna and the shoes that didn't wear out and so on and so forth. Verse 10, Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. See, God gets upset. God gets grieved when you and I grumble and complain. How many of you ever here in church, how many of you ever grumble and complain sometimes? Yeah, I do. We shouldn't. We ain't got no God is good. You out there in Facebook, quit your grumbling and complaining. God don't like it. I was grieved with that generation because he don't like complainers. God doesn't like complainers. He likes praisers. You understand? God doesn't like complainers. He likes praisers. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Oh, God wants us to follow him. Follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow him. Follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow him. Yeah. Verse 11. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Oh my. If you're a grumbler, if you're a complainer, if you're not thankful, you won't enter God's rest. The only people that rest in God are people that are thankful. Thankful for their salvation. Thankful for the necessities of life. Quit grumbling and complaining. Quit being covetous. Quit want what belongs to others. Be a thankful person. Thank God. Every time I walk, I, 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 this is a habit of mine. This is the way I live. When I walk by someone, I, I saw a fella there by the post office. And every day I see someone that's crippled or in a chair or they're all crumbled up like that or something or they're blind or something. I pray for them. I pray for him and I say, Amen. I pray for that person. I thank God for my health and my eyesight. Amen. And, and, and my legs and I'm still able to walk. And I started doing some of my exercises. I was under therapy there for a number of months. I'm a therapist, a nice Christian lady. She's very good and she taught me a lot of this stuff and I've been getting away from it again. The Maureen's her name. She's a, a wonderful therapist. And... Uh, I started uh, doing doing that therapy again. Uh, I'm getting at it again. There's certain stretches I have to do and stuff. I told Ron, remember Ron Faust? Uh, he got saved here. I mentioned him in church this morning. Uh, Steve, uh, what's his name? Steve uh, Conziella. He brought him to church years ago. And he says, Pastor Varga, Ron needs to get saved. And and so I said to Ron, you listen, he did get saved. And as I mentioned before, he took care of, uh, he helped at the mission when Brother Breedlove, I told you about that great uh, soul winner, uh, Lamar Breedlove, from out in Lake Helen, uh, Central, uh, Fellowship, Central Fellowship Baptist Church. And uh, But anyway, uh, I talked to Ron uh, on the phone yesterday, and he told me his, uh, uh, his doctor says that uh, he's got a cane now, and uh, he's going to get a, a wheelchair. Let me, let me show you my cane. Hang on, Facebook. I'll be right back. Uh-oh, I'm hooked up to this. I'm going to carry it with me. I'm going to go over here. I'll be right back, Facebook. This is kind of a different church. This isn't, we're not formalistic or anything like that, but I'll show you my cane. There it is. You like it? It looks like Billy Joe gave me this cane. It's kind of patriotic and it's got a gnarled bottom to it and everything. I like it. Billy Joe gave this to me. I like it. He said, turn it like this, Brother Varga, and it looks like a foot. It looks like a foot, doesn't it? It's your, on this picture on Facebook, it really looks like a foot. The church, it looks like a foot? Yeah. Why was I showing you my cane? Billy Joe gave this to me. I don't use it. He tried to get it back today because it, it was one of his favorite canes. He gave me a cane, had a face carved on it like a devil, had red eyes, and I refused it. And uh, he tried to get this one back to me before I told him, no, you, he said he needs two canes. I said, you get your devil's cane you tried to give me and you use that. And I'm keeping this one. This is a keeper. 
But anyway, uh, I mentioned the cane because uh, Ron. Ron Faust. He's using a cane in San Diego. He's a, he's well there. You can hey uh, when you get over there. Gregory's going to San Diego. He was a Marine in San Diego, and he's going to relocate there. And uh, our good man works here at the mission, and praise God, uh, uh, done so much for us and learned so much about the Bible. And uh, uh, he's he, he's even featured you that get our mail. He's featured on the back of our mail this month. Uh, as someone that's done good for the Lord here, and he's going to relocate in San Diego. But yeah, you'll have to look Ron Faust up when he goes to San Diego. Uh, but he said his doctor told him yesterday, he's been there for a number of years. By the way, Ron Faust from San Diego, he sends me sometimes $100, sometimes 200 He sent me as much as $500. That's a guy got saved. Some people say, hey, them, them homeless people sleep in the woods and that they ain't good for nothing. He seems to be doing all right. Got saved, relocated to San Diego, sends money back to his church uh, here and uh, helps us with, with uh, reaching others for Christ. Amen. You sorry people that hate homeless people. God help your wicked soul. We've got so many that are against the homeless and poor. And here's a man. But anyway, I talked to Ron yesterday, and he says, he said, Pastor Varga, he's always, always, he loves to talk to me. I'm his pastor. And he says, uh, my doctor says I'm going to have to get a wheelchair. I says, don't you get a wheelchair, Ron. Don't you get a wheelchair. <coughs> I said, you tell your doctor to send you to therapy. He said, well, he tried to. I told him I didn't want to go. I said, you got to go, Ron. I'm, I hope he watched it. I'm going to call him tonight and tell him he better see this on Facebook. I'm talking about him. He said, I promise you, Pastor, I'll go to therapy. I hope he does because he'll get walking again. He said his calves uh, he said his calves were real sore. He's just got to exercise a little bit. That's all. And he was in the service. He knows how to do. Uh, what do we, we call it back in the Marines? Uh, PT? Is that what we call it? Yeah, yeah. PT. That's a man. PT physical training it's all you need so uh anyway how to get on him i don't know i wander all over the map take heed brethren verse 12 lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living god god has no we have no right for unbelief christian brother and sister in christ Take heed, brethren, that's brothers and sisters in Christ. Least there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Had a couple of folks come back to church today and this morning and this evening. Haven't been around in a while. And, and uh, uh, so, so good to have you back in church, Victor. Victor wasn't feeling well at all. He had to go to virtue. He almost died. And uh, he's healthy now. He's got back healthy. And bless you. You look so much better, Victor. And, and uh, sometimes physical ailments can really tear us down. It did take you to the grave, actually, you know. <laughs> they can. Glad to have you back tonight in church, Victor. I'm not ready to go yet. You're not ready for the grave. I'm going to serve God. Amen. I'm not either. I'm, not ready to go see my mom and dad yet. I'm looking forward to going to heaven, folks, but not on the next load. Amen. I still got something to do <laughs> for the glory of God. Um, take heed, brethren. Least thou be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Believe, 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 believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. Believe to be saved out there on Facebook if you've never been saved. Believe for whatever you need. I'm just believing for some things right now that I need. That God's going to do for me. I like what Ron said. Get back to Ron Faust. He said, Pastor, you encouraged me to read the faith chapter. That's Hebrews 11. 
He said, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it and believing it. And he said, I'm reading Romans a lot too. I'm reading in Romans a lot too. And Romans is a wonderful book, you know. The dynamite of the gospel and faith. Faith in Romans. And I was so glad to hear him say that. Believe. Believe for something. Take heed. Least thou be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from... See, because when you don't believe in God, you depart from Him. You understand? And He can't answer you and He can't do anything if you don't believe. You see, the condition of having blessings from God, salvation and all other blessings that He adds, is belief is necessary, you understand. You believe and you receive. Unbelief and departing from the living God. Look, verse 13. But exhort one another daily. That means I need to exhort you, you exhort me. Amen? I'll exhort you, you exhort me. This isn't a one way street. It's not just the pastor exhorting the congregation, although that's a big thing. And I think a pastor from the pulpit should exhort the congregation in a meaningful way and in a big way. But I think that the church ought to exhort the pastor too. Amen? I need you to lift me up, Brad, and, and uh, Gregory, and, and uh, Victor, and so on. And uh, Amen. Good to see Leslie back in church tonight. I missed Leslie for two weeks. He's back today. That's, so, that's good. Always good. Encourage me, church. I'll encourage you. Let's encourage one another. You out there on Facebook, you relatives that are watching and you friends that are watching, I'm encouraging you. Encourage me, too. Let's exhort one another daily. While it is called today, at least any of you be hard, hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You know, sin's a terrible thing. It hardens us. Do you mean that sin can harden Christians? Yes, there's a lot of Christians that are hardened by sin, and they consequently they get away from the Bible, and they get away from church, and they get away from God's people. Even Christians can be hardened by sin, and, and we shouldn't be as God's people. Verse 14, For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Uh, what, what, what does it mean from the beginning? Uh, verse 14. Uh, we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. That means I started, the beginning was April 4th, 1969, uh, when I was saved. Amen? That was the beginning. Do you have a getting saved day? You better have. If you don't, you're going to hell. You out there on Facebook, you got to get in saved day. That's the beginning. I heard people tell me, well, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian all my life. Impossible. you got to be born again. Nobody's a Christian all their life. No, you got to have a beginning. you got to have born again experience. And it says... Uh, Steadfast unto the end. That's again we're talking about the steadfastness of a, the endurance of a Christian. The perseverance of the saints. Amen. I want to be as faithful today as I was when I started. I know more now. I want to be steadfast in believing. I believe then. Uh, you know why I couldn't believe as much then as I do now. I didn't study the Bible as much. Didn't hear as much preaching. Amen. Now I know more. Verse 15. While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Now it said that before in this same chapter we read it, didn't it? And it talked about the provocation and the hardened hearts of the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Remember that? And when Moses had to lift up the serpent, and when he had to feed him with quail and stuff, and, and uh, kill a bunch of them, and... and uh, and uh, it says, while the food was in the air, he, uh, <laughs> Brad, we got to watch out on this one. It says he killed the fattest of them. 
You used to be. You're a little bit fat, uh, Victor. You ain't fat like you used to be, but you're a little bit fat yet. You still got pot belly a little bit. Yeah, I'm not. A little bit. A little bit. Not, no, you're getting better. Don't get too proud now. You still got a little gut on you. You can still do a few sit-ups, amen? A few crunches. Oh, no, you're doing a lot better. Don't get me wrong. But you ain't arrived yet. You're on the road, and you're on the road, amen? On the road. All right, stay on the road. While it's said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Said it twice in this chapter. Uh, you know why he said it twice? It's important. You know why he said it twice? He don't want we as Christians to get hard-hearted, amen? Got a lot of hard-hearted Christians, amen? Don't want to be me or you. Verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke... Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So here he's getting back to that that crowd that came out of Egypt, you know, that were provoked and grumblers and complainers. God didn't like that, did he? That was in the provocation. They were provoked. Same same word. Verse 17. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? All the they were in the desert for 40 years. You know what they did for 40 years when they were on the desert? In the desert, they walked around in circles. They walked around in circles. That desert wasn't that bad. They, wa they walked around in circles in a stupid desert. That ain't good. Verse 18, And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believe not. Now listen, dear Christian friend here in church tonight and you out there in the listening audience. You won't get God's rest if you don't believe, if you're hard-hearted, and if you live in sin and you don't believe as a Christian, you're not going to have God's rest. Let me ask you that question. Church here tonight, do you have God's rest? I have God's rest. I'm old. I got some aches and pains. I got trouble. The Bible says we're born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. Everybody is that way. Amen? Anybody else in the church got trouble? Yeah, everybody. We got trouble. Out there in Facebook, trouble? Yeah. Born under trouble as the sparks fly upward tells that in Job. So, but I can believe... And I can rest in God. The Bible says this, God delivereth us from all our trouble. All. A-L-L. -L. Some of it lasts for years. Some for minutes. But God will give us rest. Uh, verse 19, and we close the chapter and we're through. It says, so we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nothing impossible to him that believeth. They grumbled, they complained in the wilderness as some of us do, as all of us do sometime or another. If we don't believe, we don't have the rest. And as it closes out the chapter, sadly, so we see that they could not enter in into what? In this rest because of what? Unbelief. Same thing today. Same thing with you and I, dear friend. Unbelief can't enter into the rest. What about it, Facebook friend? Are you saved? Are you saved? There might be someone on Facebook that's not saved. You need to get saved tonight. What about it, church? I'm looking at my church people here tonight. I believe every one of them has professed faith as I know it. But we need to believe stronger, church. Amen? Sometimes we have unbelief. Amen? You got some some worries. Gregory's going to be relocating to San Diego. There's always some apprehensions and you think, well, what about this and what about that? And there's always some security in where you are, you know, but sometimes we just have to step out in faith and believe, amen? 
and God to be with us. Amen? And so I'm not going to say, so we see that they could not enter into the rest because of unbelief. I won't believe. Amen? Let's believe. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you that we as God's people in this Hebrews book was written to children of God and holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. That's the way it started out in verse 1. We believe for salvation, we that are saved. Now let us believe for every victory and everything that God has promised. I like what Brother Hiles used to say. Brother Hiles always used to say, I don't just have selected promises in the Bible. I got them all. I'm going to take them all. I'm going to believe. Amen. I like that. This is for Jews, and this is for them, and this is for them, and these ultra dispensation. Fooey on you dispensationalists. Alter. Oh, yeah, we did have different dispensation in Old Testament. I know Old Testament news. I know all about that. But I'm going to get them blessings. Amen. I'm going to believe. I'm going to enter in the rest. Would you do it here in church tonight and out there on Facebook? You're a Christian. Why don't you just believe? What do you need to believe for? What's the victory? What's the mountain that you can't get over? What's the valley you can't get out of? Believe God and have deliverance today, dear Christian brother and sister. Would you do it? I hope you will. God will give you rest if you believe. Now, for you that aren't saved, I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, you've never been born again, pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins. I receive Christ as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Dear ones, I hope out there on Facebook, if anybody wasn't saved, that you got saved today. And I pray that anyone here, I believe everyone's saved here in church tonight. But I'll speak especially to Christians today. Let's enter into his rest because of belief. Let us believe. I see some came in on this later. Go back to the beginning of the message. Listen to it all. I think it's all pertinent. Maybe someone out there on Facebook could shoot this to someone else, be an encouragement to them from Hebrews 3 that another saved people or a lost person needs it, whatever. God bless each one of you. I care about you. A lot of different names come up here on this Facebook thing. I love you all. I care about you. I love my church that's here. I'm going to turn off Facebook now. Share it with someone. And we're going to go off now and talk to you tomorrow. Bye.